In today's lesson, we're gonna talk about how to navigate the fretboard with the grace and expertise of an unqualified YouTuber giving mental health advice. So we're gonna start with the key of E. All right, so a little bit of a preview of what we're gonna do is gonna sound like this. like a million things that we can do from here, but it's just taking a couple different things in the key of E major and then tying them together to really make your way all throughout the different parts of the neck in this kind of rhythm lead combo. Just a fun way to play the song, right? So E major right here, open E, 2 A, 2 D, 1 G, open B, open E. Now I think it's one of the most fun keys to play in, one of the prettiest keys as well, just because you get that open string kind of droning, right? So the two open strings that we don't want are gonna be D and G, okay? There's actually a D sharp and a G sharp in this key, so if you have like a open G note, it'll be like, ah. Uh. Not exactly what I was going for, but there's an easy way to navigate all these, so let's really quick go over the notes in the key, and then we'll talk about the shapes and how you can avoid them. So you don't have to memorize the notes, but it is really helpful. So the, the frets would be open, two, four, open, two, four, one, two, okay? Really easy to play, you can fly through them, especially with those double ham rounds where you strike the string once and then open two, four. So E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D, E. Okay, now the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go from this E major chord into this C sharp minor chord, all right? So, really important distinction between these two chords, as we have the root note chord, the one chord in the key. We'll go over all the keys in a minute, or all the chords in this key in a second. But this is a one, two, a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. C sharp minor is the relative minor in the key of E. They're always gonna sound really good together, all right? And then again, this doesn't have to be a bar chord. Remember, we said we can leave that open E uh, string open, even the B string if you want kind of make it more interesting. So if you just put a power chord on that fourth fret E string, sixth fret D string, sixth fret G string, you kind of get a really cool open sounding C sharp minor representative. But if you wanted to put your middle finger on the fifth fret of the B string, you're just doubling down on that E note and getting a full C sharp minor chord, right? So E major, C sharp minor. And right there, we're already kind of getting, you know, the lower part of the register, and then getting into the middle part, the juicy part of this neck. So let's do something to connect these chords first, and then go further, all right? So I'm gonna play it like this. So it's a cool transition. That you can always do between a one chord and its relative minor, all right? So what I'm doing is I'm getting that open E chord. And then I'm going two to four slide, which again, these are the first three notes in the scale. And then the two on the A string, that B, so two to four on the E string, two A, and then I'm sliding that into the C sharp minor. So I'm kind of spelling out the chord, essentially, and then sliding it into the next position. And again, you can do this with any one chord to a six chord. Like, for example, if we were in the key of G major playing with bar chords. So think of this spelling, right, this outlining of chord tones as just a way to transition from the one chord to the sixth chord, which is always gonna sound good in any key. But it's probably only gonna sound good if you've got Elixir strings on your guitar. This video is sponsored by Elixir strings, my all time favorite strings. These have aged into the sweet spot on this Martin D18. Like, this just sounds, I was kind of just practicing and like doing the, the prep for this video when I was gonna do it, and it's like, this guitar sounds, So good. Like there's something about like an Elixir Strings set that has been broken in that just really 
just feels and sounds so good. So if you've never used these, please do me a favor and click the affiliate link in the description to get yourself in a set of Alistair strings because they're just, they last forever. They sound great. I use the 12s. I think that's like the perfect uh, thickness to kind of still be like super playable, but have like that warmth in it. And I, these are the 8020 bronze. So thank you to Elixir for sponsoring this video. Get yourself some Elixir strings because, oh my gosh, come on. How good do they sound? All right, so we've got these two chords right here. And then the next thing that I want to outline is going to go to a higher voice of an E major chord, okay? So we're just going all the way to the ninth fret on the D, G, and B strings, okay? Sounds kind of good, you know, especially if you're in this shape, your pointer finger's already still in line. You can kind of just get from there to there, right? See how it's... Now we're playing essentially the bottom of this shape, okay? So this is, you know, an A string rooted E, major bar chord, but I just want to focus on just the ninth fret. All right, so E major. And it kind of just adds a little bit of that movement sliding between the shapes. I think always is, is just a really, a really musical way to kind of add excitement to like a piece or even just to kind of like add you know, some exploration to your own playing. Because I think, you know, if it's, uh, like, from my point of view, uh, if I'm practicing a bunch of songs and, you know, maybe I've, I'm really kind of stagnant with how I'm playing a certain song, it's always fun just to kind of slide into a different position and then just start messing around and kind of trying just different techniques and stuff. So the beautiful thing about getting into that root chord in this position is it lines us up perfectly with C sharps, relative minor scale or the minor pentatonic scale either way however you want to kind of slice it up but that's that that money spot i don't want to talk just about the pentatonic scale right here even though all that stuff is you know in play i want to actually take the minor scale or what you know play like that it is the e major scale but i'm still thinking of it in a minor context where we're just adding the notes on the d g b and e string where it's 9 11 and then we'll go right to 9 11 9 10 12 9 11 12. okay so it's just kind of like the hits from most of the full minor scale etc you know we could go the whole way, but eh, again, this is going to be like a little launching pad for us. And if that's too much, then just go straight minor pentatonic if you want. But we're going to add some of those notes to what we're playing. So E. About this getting it in here and I'm, again I'm just exploring however I want to you can do double stops whatever you want that's why you know there's so much merit to learning pentatonic stuff because you can always slide it in in any context it doesn't always have to be bluesy it can be really cool but going from here into an open E like this is great because your hand buys you so much time to get back as long as you just hit that open string, right? E, slide to minor, relative minor. So as you slide back, remember you just have to hit that downbeat with that open E string with your pick or your fingers, however you're playing it. And then your hand has time to get back into the money spot, right? So let's go through other chords in this key to maybe make a, a secondary progression. We have F sharp minor and G sharp minor. Those would be the two and the three chord, right? Which can be really difficult if you're doing bar chords. F sharp minor, two, four, four, two, two, two. G sharp minor, four, six, six, four, four, four. This can be hard to hold down. So why not just open up the B and E string and make it a lot easier for yourself? So. Minor seven-ish shapes is what we'll go for these two on the E string. I'm just actually muting the A string with my middle finger, even though, you know, you, you can get it in if you want. But then I'm going 2D and 2G, and then leaving the other strings open. 
All right, so E, C sharp minor, E, F sharp, G sharp. Then the next time I'm going to go E, C sharp minor again, and then my favorite move. My favorite chord in any key is going to be the four chord as a major seven. Here's a nifty little trick where you take the six chord, C sharp minor, and then you just take your pointer finger and then just go diagonal, a string lower, and then you end up with the four chord as a major seven chord, A major seven. So just by kind of using the same stuff in this exercise over two chords, we've really got the one chord, two chord, three chord, six chord, four chord, all right? So one, two, three, four, six. What we've done is we've skipped the five chord, which is B. But another cool way to do this is just to be with an open B and E string. So we're getting all our bases covered here, right? A lot of information going on in this lesson, which is why you're gonna need some of those elixir strings while you're rewatching this because they last so long, right? Look at this, come on. This is the five chord. Usually the five chord is like bluesy and kind of like whatever, but if you just take that B major bar chord shape, seven E, nine A, nine D, eight G, and then open B and then an E on top. How great does that sound? Then B, C, D, E. This would be like a B major add 11. Call it add four, I won't be mad at you. To the four chord A. So this will be like our our secondary, so our B part. And you know, let's, let's say we're writing a song. We've got B to A, and then we'll jump back and forth between that five to four chord. So let's we'll start at the beginning. E major. to C sharp minor. Then is the four chord to the five chord. And five always leads you to one, right? So I think having this B major chord lead you back home is a little bit more of a more, I, I don't know, I guess elegant could be the way to describe that than getting a B7 chord to lead you to one. Again, obviously they both work, but they work in different ways. This is more of a crunchy bluesy, get yourself back to one. And this is more of a, you know, maybe I'll just stay on five a little bit. One, right? I think that's kind of a, a fun way to do it. And then, the last thing we're gonna do is the alternative one chord voicing, my favorite of all time right here. You see me play every demo that I've ever done, I use this chord. E major seven open, open E is the octave, seven A, six D, eight G, B and E. How good does that sound with these open B and E string on top? So if you can see, I think that's a good example of like how we just used everything. We've got these big open chord voicings here. And again, I, it looks your strings. Key of E major. Martin D18. What more could you want? Uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments, but uh, yeah, like I said, Hit up that affiliate link, really helps me out a lot. And I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks a lot.